it should be really easy to do as a watercolor painting. It should be really simple to paint, which is great because I'm still a little bit new at watercolors. So I thought that I would give this a go as a painting for something that we have that we the business that KKR Works participates in, which is called Market Night. Market Night happens once a month and is put on by a lovely group of people called the SCC Dojo. Um, Shugs is amazing and she's one of the people that runs it and so we try to participate and every month they have a theme and this month's theme is hearts and rainbow farts so it is very much happy joy joy in prep for Valentine's Day and so I thought that this was kind of cute so I'm gonna give it a shot mm. so one of the important things that you deal with with watercolors is your paper, of course. So watercolor paper um, is thicker and heavier than normal paper and thicker and heavier than cardstock as well because it hands holds up to the water that, of course, you are putting all over the paper. And it doesn't tear and it doesn't uh, pill like some of the paper can do. It stays pretty solid, um, but it is paper, and paper expands when it is wet, so you have to make sure to tape down your paper. This is just some regular blue painter's tape that I got. Um, it is squared down as best as possible to make sure that it is... Um, going to be even on all the sides basically to make sure that I don't have weird edges it's not completely perfect but it will work and it will be good which is the point um I am trying to get to my twitch account to make sure that I can see people if they set up into my chat room so now it says I'm offline let's wait and see if I can get it to go online Twitch has been a little funky for me today, and I've had some issues with it, which is always fun. This is also a brand new setup as far as mounting my camera and getting some light to paint with, so if you guys see something that's a problem, please jump into the chat room and make some suggestions. I'm really hoping that we'll get some of our viewers from Facebook over here so that I can talk to them as well. Um, this should be better than Facebook Live for a number of reasons. Oh, it says I'm streaming now. Yay. Let's see if this works. <sighs> um, Facebook Live, as I was talking about earlier, really only allows you to broadcast from your phone and it's really really hard to set up a camera with your phone that gives you a good view of something that you are working with um, so I'm hoping to make this a little bit easier and a little bit better uh, I looks like everything is set up and going And that I am running live. We're going to give this a share to Facebook. As my computer struggles desperately to keep up with what I'm doing, which is fun. There we go. Shared to Facebook. Okay, so I try to do watercolor pretty cheaply. I have a couple of different sets. All of them are the Reeves set from Michaels. So you can see that's the Reeves set. 
Um, I use two different things. I use watercolor and I also use gouch. And oh, yay! Kayla is posting to social media so that I can just paint. And we have viewers. Hi, viewers. Um, and they're two different things. And I started off with gouch, which I didn't really understand the difference when I started off watercolor painting. Um, there is a difference. Part of the difference is that watercolor is thinner. It picks up your water a little bit better and you, you don't spread it on quite so thickly. Um, and I just started using watercolor in order to kind of work with that. Um, I have my giant cigar box worth of brushes. So there are lots of different brushes that I use for lots of different techniques. And I will kind of try to show you which brush that I'm using as I do the demo. But we'll see how this goes. So you think of sunsets. We think of um, lots of oranges, lots of yellows. Uh, a little bit of red or a little bit of pink. Oh, I also have Kevin over here on the side. Say hi, Kevin. Hello. They can't see you, but they can hear you. Yes. Well, no. Uh, it needs to be more up in the corner. Over. Over that way. Yep. Like that. And yes, I love that. That's fantastic. He's working on an art project for me. So, anyways, um, you think of sunsets you think of lots of yellows and oranges and um you have your general horizon line and then you base your sunset and your colors around that and a lot of the pictures that you will see have like a water line to them so you get like maybe a purplish or a blue down at the bottom and then you have your yellow and then your orange and then your pink and maybe some purplish and blue up here at the top as well where your ocean and your sky meet which is great and works very very well for watercolors in general because the watercolors will blend very very well so I'm gonna do a medium yellow which is this one um, I do not recommend if you're working with anything sunwise using the yum lemon yellow. Lemon yellow has a tendency. You can see this. That's the two differences. This is the lemon. This is the medium. It has some green tint to it when you actually start to paint with it. And especially if you're adding blue anywhere around it, you're going to get a lot of green. And that's not what you want for a sunset. So we're going to do some yellow. And I use paper or styrofoam plates for my palette um, because that's pretty much what I have which works out pretty well most of the time um, it's good to mix with it's disposable uh, if I use paper plates they're very recyclable this is however a styrofoam shame on me it's bad um, I am also going to use phthalo blue I need one of those things that it like runs the paint colors along the bottom of the screen for me, like you see in Bob Ross videos. That would be cool. <laughs> I will get there. I'm not there yet. I am not Bob Ross. Um, and then, oh, we're going to do crimson. And that'll be for mixing with our blue. And then we need some white. This is actually Chinese white. There is a titanium white. I have never bothered to compare whites and see what the difference is. Someday I will do this. I'm not there yet. Um, I use liquid watercolor or paint tube watercolor. Um, no, it's not liquid liquid. It's paint color. Um, I don't like the palettes. I can work with them. I don't like them. I don't get the same color off of them. It's really hard to get good, strong color off of watercolor um, palettes for me. It takes too much watering down, and I can't use this where I can easily mix my own colors, and that bothers me. 
So I like using the paint tubes. The problem with the paint tubes is that they're a little bit more, well, they're actually a lot more expensive. Um, and they're a little bit harder to find. You can find them at Michael's and you can find them at Hobby Lobby. But if you get beyond the basic standard kit, you're going to have to buy them individually. There's no like paint packs. And they're three or four dollars a tube, which isn't terrible. Um, it looks like a lot because you get these little teeny tiny tubes, but they're actually kind of uh, a lot of them. So we use that. You want a couple of paper towels. So you have one for rinsing your brushes and drying off your brushes. And then you have one for actually drawing too much water out of the paper. And you do want to have both because you will use both very quickly. Um, so I have my brush paper towel set up where okay the other thing that I have learned is that you need two different cups of water you need one cup of water that is clear and that is your mixed water and then you need one cup of water to rinse your brushes off on and it's a good habit to start in the beginning you don't want to try to work yourself into that habit so if you're already a watercolor painter and you don't use two cups start working on it now it's hard to make yourself learn after all of that. So I have my regular watercolor paper. And then the other thing that I have, the other tool that I have, this is a hand stencil. So this is going to be my heart. And I will use this to line the stencil for the background. And then I will go back and edit it as soon as I get it laid down. Um, so we have a basic stencil of your of the hands. Uh, that I can use. So we're going to do this guy first. And I'm going to take this big brush. And this is a 5 8 brush. And it's a royal brush. And I am doing, there's two different watercolor techniques. There's a, there's a wet on dry paper and there is a wet on wet paper. And both have their uses. And you do use both of them when you work with watercolors. Um, and both give you different effects. So wet on wet will allow a lot more of the traditional watercolor that you're thinking you're seeing. When you're, you're seeing that really soft edge watercolor that is wet on wet. And so you just take your brush and your regular clear cup of water. And you're going to brush down your paper. You're going to get it good and wet. And this is why we have a tape down. Because if you tried to do this, the paper would curl. Um, so you want to make sure that you, of course, tape it down to something that isn't going to uh, absorb the water. Like if you taped it to cardboard, the cardboard would just pick up all the water and soak it out of the watercolor paper a little bit faster. And so you can see it starts to kind of billow. Maybe you can see it in your video um, where I'm laying down the water. And that brush I'm going to keep in my clear water cup because I will even, um, every once in a while, I'll have to go back and re-wet the water. Um, so we're going to work on the sun. And so you work on your center and then you, you go out from there with what you're working on. So we're going to do some yellow. And you get your brush good and wet and you get some water good on the tray so that it's good and thinned down. And you start doing just a really light touch. And so of course your sun is going to be in the middle. And so you can kind of see how it spreads out um, a little bit as you start laying down the paint. The more wet your brush is, the more that paint is going to run. And the more wet your paper is, the more that paint is going to run. So you can just start dabbing it around your center. And you kind of see where your horizon line is. The nice thing with watercolors is that it's really forgiving. If you have 
too much on the canvas. So, like, I don't like this little spot over here. Because it's still wet, I can go back with a paper towel. And I can pretty much just soak it up, which is really nice. It's a lot more forgiving than, um, like, acrylic paint is on a canvas. Because, like, acrylic paint, if you lay something down and you decide you don't like it, you're basically stuck painting over it. Uh, I actually shredded a canvas today that I didn't like because I have gotten a lot of work done on it. And then there was a couple of parts that I wasn't really fond of. And I couldn't fix them. There was no fix. I tried going back and kind of editing the canvas a little bit. And there wasn't really an edit to it, which was very sad. Um, and I thought about painting over it. And because of the techniques that I had used, which was to lay some paper down and kind of mod podge it down on the paper, um, there was... It was very loud. <laughs> Kevin is doing a transfer in the background, uh, if you're wondering what that noise is, because I'm sure my computer is picking it up. Um, I, I actually ripped a hole in the canvas and threw away the entire canvas that was several hours worth of work that I had done on this particular canvas because I was just so upset with it and I didn't like it so much. Okay, so. We're going to work and I think we're going to do some red. So we use our clean water, which I have sitting over here to the side. See, clean water. I'm going to get this red wet so that I can use some red to, to kind of start blending in with all of this yellow. And you can see it's still nice and wet, um, so it should blend in fairly easily with some of what's around this. We just kind of start and see how it blends out. Get that horizon line set up in there. You want it to be kind of blurry. You don't want any straight lines. This is water and earth and beauty and that sort of thing. So I love the way that this spreads, which is the point of doing wet on wet is that you're going to get this nice spread of paint that flows over your paper, which I think is really cool. Um, you see that a lot in flow art as well. And flow art has not been one of my techniques, mostly because I don't like not having control so much of what I'm doing. That is definitely Kayla's domain as far as doing flow art that is her her thing that she likes to do and it's cool and I like looking at it and I like watching the paint flow I'm just not a big person as far as um can you turn that down please uh, I'm just not a big fan of look I don't have a finished piece that I know what it is and now I have to guess and uh that sort of thing that's not really my ideal. So add some more water and go back and start working in that red. And you can watch it start of start to combine with that yellow and get some nice fiery orange going on. I'm going to help it out a little bit. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to put some of the yellow on it. I really need brighter light. I'm going to put some of the yellow on it. And on the other side, I'm actually going to work in some of this red so that I have both in my brush. And I'm going to go in and start working that in and giving that a better orange color.
you can sort of see the difference um, when you're playing with wet on wet versus wet on dry. This is the wet on wet and you can see it starts to run. And this paper over here is pretty much dried and so when I start to put it down it doesn't really move and it doesn't really go anywhere unless you hit those wet spots. Which is fine depending on what you're doing. But I want it wetter. Maybe not that wet. Okay. And if you live in a drier climate, you have to, of course, wet it more. Which is always fun. You go in and just brush that in. Uh, most of the stuff that I do or have done lately with watercolor has actually been night sky. Um, but this is pretty similar. You're using a lot of the same techniques as I use with my night sky. You're using a lot of stippling. You're mixing in a lot of color on the paper. Give some good oranges, orange color there. Uh, surprisingly enough, of all of the colors that get put in all of my boxes, I really have a lot of orange. Um, you, I mean, you can mix your own orange, which is fine and great and good. But, you know, sometimes it's nice to have something you don't have to play with so much. I think I have a gauche orange, but... Uh, We'll see. So I'm starting to get some of this flamey color down here. Um, hi! So we still have three viewers, which I believe is just me and Kayla and Becca. But um, I'm trying to figure out how to get video recorded so that we can post it to Facebook Live, which is cool. Um... start working in some of this orange. Let me see if I have an orange. I like a more orangey orange. Oh, oh, oh. So I have vermilion and I have orange red. I'm going to play with those. Oh, I have four viewers. Which means that somebody other than my friends, well, somebody other than my immediate business compadre are coming in and viewing and saying hi. I don't know who you are. Please say hi. <laughs> so that I can greet you and we can explore art together. Explore the art. Okay. Let's get some of this. I believe that this is vermilion. Vermilion sounds like fun. Today. We're working some. Ooh. Okay, I like that color. It's pretty. It's a little too strong. Let's make this out a little bit. I like that color. That is pretty. Um, so one of the things about watercolors is that you blend much more readily on the page. Uh, my typical technique with acrylic ends up seeing me blend largely on the palette before I paint. And it tends to be very... Um, my technique tends to be very realism. It's not everybody's technique. It's definitely not Kevin's. But you you tend to see more squared up lines of, hey, look, this is what I'm painting. And you see some blending and shading, and, and that's all well and good. But you don't get a lot of the mixing. Um, you can mix colors on a palette with watercolors, and, and sometimes you certainly need to. But a lot of the mixing that you see done on watercolors are actually mixing on the paper as you paint. So you watch the colors combine on the paper as you're painting them, which is kind of neat. Put some in there, some orange. I like this vermilion color. So you do lots of layers. Um, and it's lots of stippling for these blurred out views. If anybody has any questions, 
about our business or about the techniques that I'm using or the brushes that I'm using or about me. You could ask questions about me. I don't know why you want to, but you can. Um, I am happy to answer them. Okay, so you can kind of see we have our basic sunset starting there. And we're going to start working in some blue. So I'm going to rinse off my brush so that I have a nice clean, I don't need orange, uh, I don't need green sky. I mean, you can have green sky, certainly, but it's not what I'm really shooting for. All right, get my paper nice and wet. My devoted water brush. And again, if you get it too wet, it's not hard to soak most of it off with a paper towel. It works pretty well. Let me spread this out a little bit. Fluff it. Fluff, fluff. Part of what I will do when I go back is to take a very damp um, brush and kind of smear some of it out to work in some of the other colors. All right, so we're going to take this phthalo blue. Watercolors dry out really quickly, which is okay because they're watercolors, and much like working with a watercolor palette, it's really easy to put the color back into your palette. So you can see that nice phthalo blue color. And I'm just going to start working it in. I'm letting it spread on the canvas. Uh, sometimes if I don't have it taped down to the table, like I do with this one, I will actually help it spread and I will tilt whatever it is I'm working on, whether it's just the paper itself or whether it is uh, like a board. It's easier to have it taped onto a board. Um, and I will actually tilt the board back and forth to try to get it to spread in the direction that I want it to spread. I don't have the luxury of doing that because I am at a six foot long table uh, so that my camera will stay still while I broadcast, but it's okay. So we're going to start spreading some of this out. where it mixes in with that skyline, you start to see some of that purple grow. And this is still using the same brush that I started with. Um, this is a round plaid folk art brush. It's a number five. Uh, it's the brush that I turn to a lot for doing stippling and sky work which is a lot of what you see is a lot of stippling work. So you get that starting to spread out. And we take our wet brush, start to spread that into the skyline so that those colors mix. Like I said, you see a lot of mixing on the paper as far as watercolors are concerned. Because where those two colors are, they really mix on the paper, whereas with acrylic, once it dries, it's pretty much on there and pretty much stuck. Uh, so you don't see a lot of the same blending techniques that you do with watercolors. Kevin and I were just having a discussion the other day, and he was asking me to do some watercolor work, but it was on a canvas, and you technically can do watercolor work on a canvas. It's possible. Um, it's just, it's a little bit trickier because I'm going to add some red in here at these edges and try to get some purple. Um, it's a little bit trickier because you are, you have to prime, you have to prime your canvas. That's what I was going for. Talking about the canvas. Lost my train of thought. I'm trying to paint and talk. I just need some water or some music playing in the background so that I don't have to talk. <laughs> Uh, you have to prime your canvas if you're going to do water. You can technically do watercolors on a canvas. It's possible to use them. Um, but you have to lay down like a couple of layers of primer and stuff like that in order to get your watercolors to really work. 
on Canvas. Okay. You see that sky start to mix with where your sun is. Pull that color up into your skyline. Pick up a little black. No, oh, my black's gone dry. Some blue on my brush. Give just a tiny bit of black. And start working that in at these corners. My water cup's in the way. Start working, working it in at the corners. Bring in some of that dark. Just drag it over. You can make this as light or as dark as you really wanted to. As Bob Ross would say, it's your world. <laughs> You start dragging that over. A little bit more black. The water. I like sometimes having Bob Ross on in the background as I sit here and paint. He's very calming and very soothing to me. And those happy little trees. Start mixing some black and spreading it out this way. And you just kind of work with it. And work with it. Until it's the way that you want. See, you can even tell there's some ripple here um, in my paper. As it has soaked up so much water. That it ripples out like that. We work it over this way. Don't want that sunlight to extend quite all the way to the horizon. Blend that in. Blend, blend. Blend, blend, blend. And all you need to blend sometimes is just a little water on your brush. And we'll start taking over that effect for you. And spread out. A lot of artists that I'm really inspired by between my husband, who, as most of you know, is an absolutely stunning artist. Um, a lot of his stuff inspires me to paint in general, which is great. Um, I just got a big drop of blue in the middle of my sunset painting. That is all right. We will work with that. Um, a lot of his stuff really inspires me to paint, and he's really such a fantastic artist <sighs> that he, he just doesn't know it sometimes. Um, and I know that Kayla and I both get inspired by him. Kayla inspires me. She is a fantastic artist. And she does a lot of work, and she does a lot of uh, landscapes and waterworks and stuff like that. Stuff that I haven't really ever gotten into until I started working with watercolors. Because I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's land. Get out of your house and go see it. You don't need a painting. Go explore. Mm -hmm. Go explore the earth. Go explore the world if you want to see it. Why do I need to paint it for you, right? Well, 
I got into watercolors. So you can see, as I start to just spread this out with a little bit of water on my brush, this is the same paint. Um, it spreads out very nicely. Uh, just dry off. Dry off. Um, but she started painting it, and it was really cool. I kind of got into what she was doing. And so that when I started painting with watercolors, I mean, you guys have seen. Well, maybe you guys have seen. I don't know who's watching. Um, you guys see a lot of my stuff be Starfields. Well, I stole that from Kayla, too. <laughs> Kayla did these Starfields that were absolutely amazing. And there was this painting that I was working on. And I was like, uh, hey, you want to do this background for me? And she was like, yeah, I'll do this background for you. And I was like, cool. And then it took time, as it always does with our lives that are busy. And I got tired of waiting on her to do this star background. <laughs> so I just did it myself. Um, and played with the technique. And it has actually translated really well over to watercolor, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I have, what did I use? This is ultramarine blue. I switched blues because uh, I wanted a little bit more of depth as I started to paint this ocean. So I have wet on wet again. And rather than doing the splotchy dot technique at the moment, I am just brushing on a fine layer of this ultramarine blue. I have my brush super wet and I have the paint super wet so that it's a really thin layer of this ultramarine blue. Thin, thin layer. Some kind of fuzz in my paint. Thin, thin layer. And you can see where it starts to kind of interact with our sun. We get some greens. That's okay. And it'll come up here and it'll start to blend with the sky blue. So, Kayla, you're manning my social networking. Are people not online tonight? Or do they not like Twitch? Or... Do you know what's going on? So I have some black, and I picked up some ultramarine blue, and I picked up some phthalo blue. And I'm just starting to kind of drag the very tip of my brush along. And I kind of like the waves that are in my paper at the moment. Um because it's giving a different design to the waves that I'm working with, which is really neat. And it's changing that up a little bit and giving us some waves. Oh, um, I was wondering if how, how social media sharing was going. Are people just not around and on tonight? So I've got some red mixed in with this one and black and blue so that it's a little bit purple as we start to see where the sun is setting like we were 
talking more. This kind of blends in. Give some more of that purple. Once it pulls away from the sunset, it gets a little bit darker. And you don't want any of that purple snagging in there. So you see how this kind of creates movement down here in our waves. Not too much, not too much. Okay. Uh, in fact, I want to reflect some of that darkness up here in our sky. So you start doing a dark line up here, pulling some more of this black. And give some shadow to that. So much so that it's almost completely black up here at these corners and up here at the top. where the sun fades out. Okay. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to touch up some of the sunset a little bit more. Because I've got some blue that's sitting here, which is really hard to see with the way my lamp is sitting. Just a second. Oh, maybe turning off my lamp is better. Well, you kind of glare either way, don't you? Ah, blind myself. This is what test runs are for. Um, pie. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up some more of this yellow orange and kind of dab back here. Got some of that blue that splattered into the middle of my painting earlier, which I didn't see happening. Nothing wrong with that. Just go back and kind of work it in. Work it in, work it out. I'm sure the glowing blind does help my art. I'm getting some orange. I need to figure out a whole lighting camera system thing to work with so that when somebody actually decides to come watch me produce art on Twitch, and as we get more popular, it looks good. I'll love that. What? I'll love it. You love what? Getting more popular on Twitch. Please support local artists. Oh, Kayla is the only one watching, but. <laughs> So I'm going back and just kind of working some of this yellow and orange into the rest of my painting. You see it kind of blend out there.
What are you microwaving? Huh? What are you microwaving? You're painting a painting expi inspired by me. Oh, and I have a new viewer. Hi, new viewer. What painting are you painting that's inspired by me? Mm -hmm. No, Kayla. So, new person, please feel free to introduce yourself. Say hi. So I stop feeling like I'm talking to just myself and Kayla, which I could do anyway. And me. Oh, and Kevin. Sorry, I didn't mean to forget about you, dear. A winter tree with a water paint-ish background. So I'm reaching a point where I kind of have to let this dry up a little bit and I have seen a lot of watercolor artists, um, well most of the time if they're doing demo videos they time lapse which I don't have the ability to do because I'm sitting here on Twitch um, or they go in and use a hair dryer which I don't really have. Uh, but I'm going to dampen up some of this, which kind of works in like clouds, which I'm going to put in in just a second. And it kind of helps soak up some of that excess water. Watercolors actually dry really, really fast, so usually it's not so much of a problem um, letting it dry so that you can paint more of it. Part of what you're looking for is that this curl to your paper goes away so that you can lay something down instead. Um, I'm going to do very, very minor cloud work while I have a little bit of an opportunity. Um, so this is just some white that I'm working with. This is the Chinese white. Again, I don't know what the difference is between Chinese white and titanium white. I think titanium white has a slightly gray tinge to it. Um, whereas titanium white is very white. Or Chinese white is very white white. And titanium white has some grayish tinge. I think that's the difference. And you can certainly see that the white stands out among all of the other splatters on my paint. Okay. Uh, I've often thought about just doing a watercolor picture that is just splatters. <laughs> just splatters paint everywhere. Um, and seeing how that kind of turns out. So I'm taking my brush and this is part of it that I'm working that water with my clean brush and I'm sort of just running it through. Really? Really? Why you gotta be bumping me? And smacking my husband ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and then I lost my train of thought. Oh, just painting like blobs of watercolor. And titanium white is supposed to be more opaque white, while other whites tend to be transparent. Okay, then. Well, we will find out how this works then. Um, 
just painting splatters. Like, I think that would be really fun. So this is kind of what I do when I start working with uh, skyscapes. I do some white or the lighter color that I'm using on my brush, and I just stipple. Stipple, 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 stipple. And it picks up these colors, and it spreads. It gives some very interesting shapes to clouds or nebulas. And you don't have just a solid white. You get this white that picks up whatever color you happen to be working with at the time. Hi, dear. Would you like to say hello to our all one viewer that happens to be Kayla? Which this theoretically will be put on our website coming up at some point. So, I mean, technically it's not just Kayla. It's a big puffy cloud. Uh, I don't know if I can see if this works. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Okay, I'll stop adjusting the camera now. I was hoping to zoom in because uh, you can't really see with good detail what's going on here, which means that my camera lens is too high. Uh, and I'm not picking up any of the detail that I would like to with this painting. So I've got to figure out how to adjust my camera lens and make it zoom. And I haven't figured out enough about Twitch to do that yet. Move left, move right, transition speed. Nope. No idea. Tools? Nope. Hey, Kayla, figure out how to zoom. <laughs> how do you Hubby cam? Are you going to hold it? Mm -hmm. But you're eating and I can't have you do that for an hour. You would get bored. I'm just working with some of these clouds. I can zoom in. And getting some different formations up in the sky. Which is very soft. Um, little transformations of clouds in the sky. Oh, too much paint. And you can kind of tell right away when you have too much water on your brush because you get this very muddled uh, kind of look as you're trying to stipple. Uh, it blends too much together. What does Bob Ross say? Happy clouds, happy trees. Do one more. Little cloud up here in the sky. I'm just going to work that in. And this helps let the rest of our paper dry so that we can go ahead and do our silhouette on. So I'm going to try, and forgive me. If this makes you nauseous, I'm going to try and move my camera so that I can get a better zoom <laughs> on what I've been doing. Oop. Okay. So this is closer in, and you can see the stippling that I've done with the cloud work. Put this camera back up here. Oh, which of course is now off base. Okay, I will not move the camera again, I promise. Because <laughs> now it's all a mess and all askew. Skew, askew. Okay, I will not do that again, I promise. I will not move it.
as much as I want to get the camera closer this turn, I will not move the camera base. <laughs> Do you need the hubby cam? No, it's fine. I should see where it is for now. So, I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of smear some of this out. So, I'm just taking a very light, very light, light dip of the water in the clear water with this big brush. And I'm just smoothing out some of these colors. I don't really want to blend them. So, I don't want a lot of water. But I just want to smooth out what I'm working with so that you don't have so many harsh lines on your painting. But you don't want to lose all of the pretty colors that you started building either. If you need to, if you have too much harshness like I just had right there, you can get your paintbrush a little wetter and you can push those colors out a little bit more so that they blend a little bit better like I just did with that one. You can blend away those edges. Blend in some of this orange. <gasps> you have to be very careful when working with your orange and then you're pulling next to each other. I don't want a green sunset. I mean, you could have a green sunset, I suppose. Okay. So now that we've got all of that smoothed out, except for our nice fluffy clouds, blend this a little bit more. I'm gonna sit here and let this dry for a second. It's fine because it's only Kayla. The camera is off. I know the camera is off. Uh, let me see if I can fix it. <coughs> Without making you incredibly nauseous. Is that better? I have, I have four viewers. I didn't show me four viewers at all. Hi, people. Hi, viewers. <laughs> Come talk to me and say hi so that I know that I have people watching. And I am really, really sorry for screwing with the camera if I made any of you nauseous because that is horrible. Uh, Twitch is showing me nothing. And XSplit is also showing me no viewers. So please say hi. Please say hi. I don't know who you are. Um, I just closed down my chat screen. Which was unfortunate. So please. Please talk. Please say hi. So that we have something to talk about while I'm waiting for paint to dry. Because if there is anything worse than watching water boil, it is watching paint dry. And I could talk to you about random things. I have another painting that I'm going to start tonight. And that is a tiger. Um, and it is one of my it's one of my sky inputs. Um, do I have my camera cord? Oh, my. Oh, um, sorry. sorry hold on. There we go. Okay. It's one of my sky, uh, animal paintings that I'm doing. Do you see my computer charger? Your computer. The end to my computer charger. There we go. Here it is. There it is. Before my computer dies. And we leave Twitch. Okay. <coughs> so. 
Anyways, viewers, viewers want to say hi? Mmm. Watching paint dry. So, I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to do the harder part of this. So this is our stencil that I'm going to place. And my paper is curling just a little bit. We're actually going to take this up. Twitch may have lied. Oh. Okay, let's just wreck onto one viewer, so Twitch may have lied. Oh. So I pulled this up with the tape so that I can stretch it and flatten it and get some of those curls out. I had decided to show up in my paper. When you go to peel up this tape, you just want to do so very gently and very carefully. This is cheaper tape, so I've still got some paint that has spread underneath my tape, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pull up just a little bit of that. And you can see this really nice line that I've got sitting right here. Which is something that fascinates me about how I have to do this. Look at these really crisp, clean lines. But you're never not going to have those lines uh, if you tape down paper. Okay, so I've got that paint rearranged with my curled paper so that I can work with this. Um, if you get thicker or better quality watercolor paper it doesn't curl quite so bad uh, so there are two ways to do a stencil you can use the cutout part which looks like this 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 you see how it's cut out because it's just a stencil or you can trace around what you have, and um, I'm choosing to trace around what I have because I like it better. Hmm. And it also means you have to figure out how to do that. And if you go too far outside your stencil lines, you're screwed. Which is always fun. So, being said, I'm going to attempt to do this very carefully. Taking a regular graphite pencil. And I'm going around the edge of my stencil very carefully because I don't want to tear the paper. It's still a little damp because I'm impatient and I'm on Twitch. And it's laying down pretty well. I can see the edges well enough. And I'm just tracing around the edge of the stencil doesn't take much you don't want to do really heavy thick lines you are going to have to go back and paint over them This is actually recording to my computer. I turn this into a speed painting demo. We'll see how that goes. A 
So the tricky part of this is you can't tip it down. So you have to uh, hold it while you sketch the outline, which is doable. It's a little trickier. It is a little challenge, eh? Okay. This side. And that part is done. All right. Send these lines out a little bit because you don't want two weird floating wrists. In your midair, turn these into arms coming across our painter, and kind of fill out some of these lines so that I can see what I'm doing. Turn this a little bit so I can get some better light. Ignore you for a bit. Okay. Nothing too perfect. We're going to paint over it anyway. We just want to get the sketch line, which I have accomplished. Hmm. So now, we're going to work with straight black because this is our shadowed silhouette, which is all we want, all I want for this painting. Nothing too fancy. A much smaller brush. Actually, I'm going to take two. And those that know me know that I'm crazy about these little teeny tiny brushes. I paint with them all the time. I like the solid fineness that they give me in paintings. Just hints of line here and there. So mix my black. I'm just gonna start going in. Painting. Painting at that center and getting close to that line. And then I'll go in and fill in what I missed later. This is a lot more black of a silhouette, a lot more of the silhouette than I typically am used to doing. You guys have seen my work. It's a lot of tribal outlines of animals and of things that I like doing. And so those lines get very small. And some of that is very detailed, but at the same time, it's just very easy tribal stuff. Um, so like I said, I have a tiger that I'm going to be working on later, which is a present for a friend. Uh, because something that we were doing went wrong. Um... A gift exchange where her secret Santa does not participate, which is very sad. Uh, I hate it when people do that. We have a bot. Yay! Does that bot work on YouTube Live too? 
Or is there a bot for YouTube Live? It's a Twitch bot. Okay. So I got most of that silhouette filled in. With a thicker brush. So that I have less work to do with the thinner one. the things on the stuff. Alright. So this is where all of my needed massage work from my husband comes in. The last step in this is to take a detail brush and this one is a mm, this is it's a five but it's not a rounded five it's just a pointed five whereas the other one I was using was a five but it was rounded and it still has a pretty good point on it this is one of my new brushes um, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in and do all this line work. Mommy. Yes, baby. Mommy. Kiddo is crying out in the background. Mommy. Oh, posh. Mommy. Yes, dear. Mommy, I need you, Mommy. What do you need, baby? You. What do you need? Mommy is working. What do you want? What do you want? Me what? We need to go back to bed. It's bedtime, sweetie. Come on, Dad. We'll talk you back in. Very much past bedtime. Fully well, bedtime. <laughs> You're all right. Daddy. You like bed. And of course, this is where I get quiet. 
Oh, well, you're poshing, it doesn't matter. So I can sit quietly here and paint. This brush sort of reminds me of a calligraphy brush, which you would see in like Chinese calligraphy painting. That looks really amazing up close. Does it look really amazing up close? It does. Great line work. Thank you. This kind of stuff teaches you to be very light with your brush. Have very light touches and to hold the brush back a little bit. Uh, on the handle. So you're actually doing more like there than like you would with a pencil. Do here. You can get lighter touches. Dear, are you struggling? No. I'm fine. Okay. I'm just doing some design work. My fabulous husband. I need to invest in some sort of clip lamp so I can get some better lighting for doing broadcasting. Maybe a better camera too. All right, From there. That is about done. Got a good silhouette going. Good paint. Let me go. Yeah, need a better light. Um, but you can sort of see. Oh, that's better on the picture. I uh, can sort of see what's going on. So we've got a good silhouette of those hands going on. Cleaning out these brushes. I'm a pretty big stickler for cleaning it out pretty immediately. Unlike my husband, who will let his brushes set for days. Which I don't understand. It's just my work. your show. So kind of tamp out these brushes. All right. So now we carefully peel back the tape. This is part of the challenging part. Especially if you don't have good painter's tape. Because you don't want this to tear. Ugh. Um, and I will actually go back later as this is a piece for sale. And take my paper cutter and straighten out these edges and cut off this white framing because I don't like it and because some of these edges are torn which I also don't like but 
most part, all in all, it did fairly well. Okay, so. I just realized I broadcast that entire thing upside down. Oh well. So we have our silhouette hands. And I will post pictures of this up on the website. And hopefully get some better view. Um, as it's dried, it's flattened out pretty well. And if you're having some problems with curling, after you are done with the painting, you can always stick it between the pages of a book that you don't like so much. Um, the book will absorb the water, the leftover water from the paper, and it will help with the curling, uh, which is what I'm going to do with this one. So I am hoping to have this video posted up on the website when the website comes up and maybe post it up on Facebook, assuming that I can figure out how to save this video. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to message me at any time, and I am happy to answer anything. Thank you.